Thanks for coming to Tough Crowd. I'm in the middle of eating something. I've got some comedians here who are going to say what they really think, not realizing that what they're really doing is committing career suicide. Because when I was growing up in my neighborhood, jobs and schools and all were racially mixed. We insulted each other based on stereotypes. Irish were drunks, Italians were dumb, blacks were criminals, and the Puerto Ricans had three kids by the time they were 12. <laughs> now, was that stereotyping or objective journalism? That's what we're going to find out tonight. Today. Yeah, I know, folks. Now listen, in today's phony and polite society, there's no free speech. If, if it is deemed offensive by any special interest group, self-imposed and media-sanctioned McCarthyism. That's what I said. We dismiss life experience and fear of being accused of the ultimate crime today, profiling. For instance, when I was a bartender, if my people came in the bar, three red-haired Irish kids with freckles and Celtic jackets and yellow eyebrows, as Nick says, I would think the same thing as any bartender. Uh-oh. I wouldn't think here are three gentlemen that want to have a couple of cocktails and quietly leave with a nice tip. I think there's going to be four broken glasses, a couple of missed sucker punches thrown at their best friends. <laughs> and I'll, I'll be cleaning vomit out of the bathroom after everyone leaves, and there's going to be a wet ripped dollar bill on the bar as a tip. And then two, say, two days later, some half cousin's going to go, you know, that's uh, McNulty's kid. He's actually really sorry about what happened. He's clean, like, he's been, cl he's been clean and sober since Tuesday. He really doesn't mean, yeah, and then wait for it to happen the next time. So my question is is stereotyping based on ignorance of a race? or experience with a race. Greg? Uh, well, stereotypes are fact. I mean, they're, they're real. That's why they stick, you know. But, but there are lots and lots of exceptions to all of them. Like, you normally don't think of jockeys as being black. But Kevin here uh, <laughs> is, is an exception. Because he's short, Colin. Oh. All right. As a matter of fact, he rode Judy to the show. Good night. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> now I don't feel so bad. Uh, I don't feel so bad about myself, at least. Maybe that's what the show's supposed to be. Kev? You're new to the show, and you've gotten a rather uh, rude welcome from the crew. Let me ask you about police profiling. What do you think? Now, because a lot of black people say the police profile, and they don't like it, but let's... This guy looks exactly like you, yes? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm saying... Not to be racist about it, but what should... St don't you think it's right for the cops if they saw you in this neighborhood, the Upper East Side, to take you and throw you against the hood of the car and smash your face into the windshield and give you a couple of, big, couple of smacks? No? Hey, I'm gonna tell you something. The fact that Colin asked me that question shows that police profiling is unfair. All right, now I'm sorry, but white people, y'all don't go through what we go through. How often are what, you red pulled lights? Out? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. How often, how often are y'all pulled out your car for nothing, for driving with one hand and immediately beat? No, you're not. You're in the comfort of your own cars. You're driving and you do what you normally do. You look at us and put a thumbs up to the cops because that's what you want to see. <laughs> You know what? You know what? I'm, oh. I'm, I'm so tired of hearing. Black guys always talk about the disadvantages of being black all the time. What about the advantages, Kevin? If you were white, you wouldn't be nearly as adorable. <laughs> and, and you know that's true. This guy, this guy's gonna be a, this guy's gonna be a big star. You know, if you were a four foot tall white guy, you'd have yeah. no options in show business. <laughs> I mean, really, you'd be like a little elf, uh, you know, a little Santa's helper during Christmas time. That would be it. But I would be happy. I wouldn't somebody. complain. That's the bottom line. Now the thing is, black people. We go through a lot, all right? Now, I'm sorry, with the cop thing, you can't tell me, Greg, how many times have you been driving and pulled over and questioned about uh, your papers in your car? Is your insurance straight? But like uh, you said, you drive with one hand. You no know white people drive like that except the Italians. <laughs> Nick doesn't drive. I'm asking Greg. Greg, Wait a minute. how many times have I How been? many times have you been pulled over, Greg? I don't drive because your cousin stole my car. <laughs> 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 All right. <Well. laughs> Racial stereotypes, obviously, no one's going to give in. What about physical stereotypes? That, Judy? No, I, I am oh. a large person. And people don't think I'm sensitive at all. Because you're large? Yeah, when you're big, people think you don't have as many feelings. And they should. Shut up. <laughs> so, uh, he's She's jealous because right. he's, you know, a four foot black right. guy, you know. And uh, no, it's, it's tough. So you think. Tough um, crowd, you know. And do you think, like, uh, fat people, people think they're uh, non disciplined? Well, they are. Really? I mean, yeah, I think people think that. Well, it's a different kind. Some people are born with generic fatness. Some people like Jim Norton are just slovenly. Generic fatness? <laughs> what? Generic, generic or fatness. genetic fatness, yeah. 
Well, you don't have to make me look like an I'm ass sorry, that I am I'm on sorry, my own I'm show. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't know what you were trying Remember I said I don't want to be self-deprecating on the show. You point I'm out sorry. what an idiot I am and that I don't know generic from genetic. That doesn't make me... Okay. That makes you de Colin deprecating. Just, just let it go, Colin. <laughs> I will let it go. Now listen, I'd like to uh, start with Nick and talk about an ac accurate stereotype about the different ethnic groups. Nick, your people, the Italians. Well, an, ac an accurate stereotype? Yeah, it's a real one. Obviously, you know, that we're all good cooks. Um, yeah. It's true. That's what I always think of when I see Italians. Uh, no, we're involved. We're all involved. <laughs> That's from today's paper. They held it. They're, they're extorting money out of a restaurant. Nice original mob idea. Yeah. They did it in 1910. Why don't you change uh, programs once in a while? Jeez. Well, what is the Irish doing for their money? Blowing up children oh, in there. England. <laughs> You know what, the Irish, that is a stereotype that is unbelievable. Thank the Irish, they re Irish really all are drunks. That really is true. You gotta admit that. <laughs> that really is true. I played, I played music in a band one time. I played in this Irish <laughs> bar in Queens. And I go up to the bar to ask for a drink. I go, you know, can I get a drink? The bartender goes, are you with the band? I go, yeah. He goes, your first eight are free. <laughs> See that? <laughs> that's, that's not true. Most, a lot of Irish are not drunks. They're in AA. Now listen, uh, <laughs> who's next? What about your people, Kev? Oh, uh, well, my people, I mean, you know, we got the common stereotypes. Our manhood, you know, us being the tough guys that we are, which I agree with. I'm a thug. Ah, I see. can say it. My mitts are tight and I throw punches. Let's see now, what's up. The thing about it is, we're known to knock guys like Colin out, especially the Irish, because most Irish hairline starts back here, and that annoys most black people. <laughs> and if you look at Colin, it annoys me. But the only reason why I'm not going to hit him now is because we laugh. That's oh, all. Don't worry about the legs. <laughs> The leg, well, Kyle's legs are awful. You can see it. That, that's from drinking. His knees have stopped growing. If you look at him close, he looks like Bambi. He stands up and shakes. <laughs> Judy, Judy, give us a stereotype. I don't think there are any uh, stereotypes. You okay. know, I'm sick of you people. Stick around. Next, we're going to talk about homosexuality. <gasps> Dun, dun, we should have music. And how I used to work at a bowling alley and smell people's shoes. They're not related, those two, but they're facts. Both of them are facts of life, right? I don't want to change the subject, but back from the last segment, don't you ever talk about the Irish box. I'm going to get Mickey Ward to come in and pop you right in his eye. What do you think of that? Irish Mickey Ward. Wouldn't happen. Good to see fight fans around. All right, anyway. You look like Mayweather. I know we. We, yeah, we you close. Don't. You know, in nobody. the commercial, he does you're not sound damn, black. And then all of a sudden. Damn, he does. If you, all right. The minute the camera's Wait on, a minute. he asks you something. Listen. You know? Homosexuality. Are you born gay? Is it genetic or is it environmental? When people are gay, if most things are a combination, why wouldn't homosexuality be? Like, look at Barbara Streisand's son. Her son is gay. Is he genetically gay, or is it from growing up listening to Barbara Streisand albums all your life? <laughs> well, you know, growing up, a lot of people thought I was gay, because the other kids would pull open the flap of my Dr. Denton's and play whack-a-mole. You know? <laughs> anyway, the, uh, Judy. Yes. You are, uh, of the persuasion? Of the lezzy persuasion, yeah. yeah. Were you but born what is whack-a-mole? Oh, leave me alone. It's that stupid game at the carnival. Oh, all right. Um, uh, it's not bad enough. It bombed. You got to question me on why I'm sorry. I stink. I'm sorry. <laughs> no self deprecation. Well, that's why it bombed. No one knows what whack a mole was. Oh, all right. All right. Yes, I knew that when I sat here in dead silence. Sorry. <laughs> Come on, let's get to the uh, f Jewish thing. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> Watch out, Nikki. I mean, so, the, uh, you know what? Gay I, I don't. I think that you are born gay, but in my case, I wasn't gay until I started hanging around with the four of you guys. Good night, everybody. <laughs> do you but, think um, so? <laughs> but do you think that's true? No, I do. I do think. A, I think you are born gay. I, yes, I do. Being a lesbian myself, but, I do I, think. But that don't it was you think a lot? Of I always knew when I was a kid that there was something different. And well, don't start. Well, but no. yeah, no, I do think you're born gay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But um. But let me ask you this. <laughs> yeah. Why is it that every time in the past 12 years I run into you on a personal level, you let me touch your breast, and it's kind of I... a moment. It's not a joke to me. If right. it's a joke, I laugh. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. If it's a joke, well, I'm laughing. Well, just because... <laughs> now, if I did that, it would be rape. Yes. It would be rape if I if did that. If you did it, it would lead to rape. It would. That's what, that's what she I was know, saying. I know. That's what I'm saying. Cops will be here in a minute. You well, it would there. depend on yeah. if you were doing it during the commercial or yeah. when the camera's on right now. Or with 20 year friends. <laughs> now listen. No, I just, I don't, I am not, no, no, no. I am not, I love men. I really love you do. men. I just don't, you, have you know. Have sex with like, why do you have to look at my I have, penis? I, was, I just don't. Look right there. I don't. I just 
You don't I, like sex I with prefer, men? It's, it's, it's more of an, it's an emotional thing. It's the whole package. Is it boring? You're physically repulsed by the whole package? I, I don't feel comfortable at all. Have like you ever you enjoyed a sexual with time with a guy? Not really. So you wouldn't be comfortable with me? No. That's a whole other story. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's really the whole package. It's, it's, it, it doesn't feel right. It'd be like Nick being with a guy, you know? Right. Which exactly. I can see that. You can see what? I can see you with a guy. I'm just saying, I can't. I can see Nick. If Nick was to say today that he was gay, it wouldn't be a surprise to me. <laughs> well, let me ask you something. In jail, go ahead. Go I ahead. was Nobody... born gay, excuse me. You were born gay? Yes, but eight months of breastfeeding wiped that right up. <laughs> I'm, I'm just glad my dad you know, wasn't walking around naked when I was teething. <laughs> Me and Kevin might be dating. Oh. You know, people are born gay. People that say you choose to be gay or not to choose, you know, you don't choose it. If, if you could choose to be gay, why wouldn't we all do it? Why, why would you put up with the hassles of trying to get a woman to have sex with you if you could just walk into the steam room at the Y? Right. There'd be no point. That's a good point. Right. That's a damn good point. Right. Now, well, if gay is kind of accepted, do you think gays are accepted more now than ever? Not this show, but I'm saying in general, in society. Uh, more, yeah. In polite I think, society. Well, I think it's more in people's... Do you think I mean, there's people still a know need? gay people now. People used to hide it all the time. Yeah. Now I think that it's out in the open. It really is disgusting, isn't it? Do you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you think that... <laughs> You, right, you like two women together. Only... Guys love looking at the two women That's together. That's true. That is true. Absolutely. But what they, is that? They, they self what is that? That's cocaine and vodka. <laughs> <laughs> well, they smell nice. It looks, it looks yeah. beautiful. Well, but it's, I wouldn't go it's that It's almost far. getting boring now, the two yeah. girls together. Though. You see it, it so much. It's, like you get, it's just become, it's become so ordinary. It used to be exciting. Now you watch those girls gone wild tapes. It's like a right. video camera turns women gay all of a sudden. Right. It, it doesn't bore me. I'm it not bored by it. Either, okay, man. Well, let's talk about gay parents. Judy's right. got kids. Gay parents. Yeah. Nice, you... Greg. Good transition. Well, what are you going to... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about gay parents. Oh. Now, I have my partner. Oh. I have one child. I adopted Your him. Your partner. Okay. What, my partner? what am I going to call her? <laughs> you I know. love her. It's not like we have well... sex anymore. No, here's the thing. Um, <laughs> I hate saying partner too. I know. I, know. I think it's like a you're in a law firm. I know. Yeah, come on. But it sounds like we own a mailbox, etc., or something. I hate yeah. it. It's annoying. <laughs> But among lesbians, let me ask you one question, which always is, because yeah. lesbians are attractive to guys. Why the right. mullet? What was that about? Why the what? The why do they still have the rat tail in the, in the lesbian I community? Wanna, oh, what if I had, like, a lesbian fashion magazine? Yeah, with all the rat tips? tails. Yeah. Oh, that's not you a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. I don't Flannel know like shirts. gay women, two gay women adopting a kid, but I hate when they do the artificial insemination. That's what I that's did. What they want. I don't give a crap. I'm going to tell her. <laughs> They can't Why? stay. They want nothing to do with men your whole life. I didn't Let say me finish it, killer. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get the urge to have a kid, you end up knocking on my door with a turkey baster and a Dixie cup. I mean, <laughs> I mean, come on. I uh, really don't think any lesbian would pick your sperm to have the oh, child. Oh, I do. Okay? Uh, uh, guys are right. clapping. <laughs> Again! Sorry. Again! Again, I apologize. If you want to say. A curse on this network, yes. you have to be like a cartoon or a talking turd. Then it's oh, okay. that's right. <laughs> ah. Let me ask you something, folks. Uh, what about gay parenting? I mean, I was raised in a, in a neighborhood. My friend had lesbian parents. And really? you haven't heard, yeah, you haven't heard uh, Green Eggs and Ham Red until it's like two women in a, right. a Williamsburg loft. Right. <laughs> we have to take a break. And we hope you don't find the power to turn off the TV and turn into the person God intended you to be. We hope you sit there like a zombie, please. All right. Now up to TRL, today's race line. How do your people rate this week? People don't like to talk ethnically in this country, yet we all have our own radio stations, TV networks, magazines, clothing lines, movies, etc. We make 1960s Birmingham Transit Authority look like the MTV Beach House today. Do you understand that? <laughs> that was a smart one. <laughs> Each week, and a responsible one, I feel. <sighs> I really... Each week, according to their behavior, like TRL, you'll see how your people come in on the charts. Kenya, for instance, was number two last week because they celebrated winning the New York City Marathon by trying to put a Scud missile between business class and coach on the Jerusalem shuttle. <laughs> Will they move to number one? Leading off at number 10, India and Pakistan, 
are fighting over a peace summit over there. I'm going to drop them both down to number 11 until they realize we'll never be able to tell them apart, except that the Pakistanis are less friendly and have mustaches and are less forgiving when you stutter out the wrong lotto numbers. They don't want to change them for you. <laughs> At number nine, you have the Israelis. They pushed it this week, the Israelis, with their outrage over the Palestinian terrorist release coming to us again. Don't come to us with every little incident. You know we're there for the big one when you need us, all right? And I don't like your phony attitude. It's so helpless. Yeah, you're so helpless that every time I come out of 47th Street photo in a daze with my pants around my ankles, holding $180 worth of camcorder lenses that I didn't need, you weren't so helpless when I was in there. All right. Inching up at number eight of the Mexicans. They got bumped up this week because that Vincente Fox speech and because I was woken up at 3 a.m. by five guys in a muscle car that were leaning on the horn after the Vargas fight. <laughs> At number seven, you got North Korea trying to be tough this year with their bad self. They're busting scud missiles over to Yemen in a cement boat. They were number one, but the lady at the, my deli got them off the hit list when she broke a 50 for me at 2 o'clock in the morning for a scooter pie. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of cement, 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 your people, Nick, were a little aggravating this week. A surprise at number six is Italy for letting Cardinal Law hide in the Vatican over there like Michael Corleone after he shot McCluskey. <laughs> but they did okay because... They did okay because the Sopranos defied network convention by not tying up all the loose ends this week, just like in real life. <laughs> At number five, new on the charts are the Malaysians for criticizing us for supporting Australia. Hey, we have to support those dumb alcoholics. They fought for us in World War II, and they didn't have to be in it. People even forgot they were down there, and they still fought for us. I don't have any static with Malaysians here, but that's because I wouldn't know one if I saw one. <laughs> I think I saw one on Cirque du Soleil. I'm not sure if it was him or somebody else. It could have been anything. <laughs> Maybe it was Tunisian, I'm not sure. But anyway, bumping up this week to number four is the Saudi Arabian royal family that poured money into Al-Qaeda. What happened to the good old Saudi Arabian royalty? The 26-year-old prince you could trust to leave his money in America, you know, going into convulsions, coke convulsions on a bathroom floor at Mohegan Sun, you know, <laughs> while Tommy James and one of the Shandells hold a bag of ice under his testicles to revive him. <laughs> that was what it was all about back then. Sliding in at number three, the Chinese have been pushing my buttons lately with their next in line for the big promotion attitude. <laughs> you really feel like you're on a roll with all your billion people, don't you, China? Let me tell you something. I've been there. I was number two in line at remote control. I got knocked back a couple of pegs. Life takes some funny turns. Like Paulie Walnut says. No one knows what the future holds, my friend. <laughs> at number two, Miss World. Nigeria, Miss World riots brought them down, but I'm not going to get mad at Senegal or the rest of West Africa because Christmas is coming. I got a lot of fake Rolexes to buy for my friends. <laughs> So, if you're listening, Twibu, I'll be on the corner of 48th and Broadway in front of Sam Ash. Let's make a deal. And still at number one, Iraq, you have really done it. You've hung on to the top spot for 47 weeks. You guys are like a regular Avril Lavigne, aren't you? <laughs> as soon as we get through that 12,000-page document, <laughs> you're going to get it, bird. Join us next time. Uh, we could see new releases from Yemen, that little small country that's getting awfully cocky, considering they're the Staten Island of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> jokes I could do, but it's not about me. It's not an ego thing to show. Here's the question. If you could change your race for a day, what would it be? Question. Greg. Uh, I would uh, like to be Native American so I can enjoy the myth of moral superiority. When, when, <laughs> when, in, re when in reality, my people enslaved and murdered each other and killed way more buffaloes than they needed, just like every other race, because collectively people all suck. Oh. And also, because if I was Native American, at least I could feel like my 12 grand in gambling losses were going to my own tribe. <laughs> Judy? I would like to be Asian for a day so that I can be the only six foot three inch Asian woman in the world. <laughs> I could reach the detergent on the top shelf at my Chinese laundromat. I would be the first Asian woman who was fired from her massage job for walking on a client and breaking his back. <laughs> and I could open the first Chinese restaurant serving Chop Jewey! Chop uh, Jewey! Yes! Jewey! I like that. Kev! I want to change my race. I'm a proud black man, goddammit. <laughs> plus, white women love me, so I'm happy where I'm at right now. <laughs> oh. oh, Nick. I think I see the problem with this country. All right, look. Uh, <laughs> I want to be uh, black for a day so I can find out where those meetings are and what they're saying about us. <laughs> I want to be black for a day so I can live on cherry soda and cheese doodles and still have under 3% body fat. <laughs> 
want to be black for a day so I don't have to hear my black friend say, you don't know what it's like to be black, man. <laughs> okay. I think we've taken some big steps here, all of them backwards. Makuna Matata, we'll see you tomorrow.